Ladies and gentlemen, be honest with yourselves. You like cheater content. You enjoy cheater content in chess. When a person is going into a game, trying to do their best, and they run into somebody who's playing not legitimately. You like it when I play against cheaters. You like it when I make cheaters play against cheaters. You like the whole thing. Well, in today's video, six cheaters get banned. Six cheaters. This video concept came to me by a subscriber who sent me a game and then fell down a rabbit hole. Now, I did it a little bit differently. The subscriber played a cheater. That cheater played a cheater. That cheater played a cheater. That cheater also played a cheater. And so on and so on and so on. Enjoy the video. Uh, here we go. I got nothing else to say. This is a very, very funny video. Um, every cheater has a different strategy. We're going to jump into them. We're going to analyze them. They're very, very funny. This very first game, as you can see, subscriber with the black pieces, excuse me, uh, was, uh, well, we'll look at it from the subscriber's perspective. Started the game, thought they were, you know, playing a Trumpowski opening, normal stuff. D5, E5, jumped into the center, by the way. A little bit better to go back to D7 here and try to play for C5. Knight E4 is not a terrible move. The cheating begins, in my opinion, uh, right around uh, the early stages. Subscriber plays the move Bishop D7. Obviously, not a great move. But the idea of this uh, is the fact that um, after Knight E4, D E4, Bishop E4, there is Queen B4 check. So it's very natural to take with the knight, because you want to preserve the bishop, and miss queen b4. That was black's idea. But white does this, giving up the bishop, which is weird, and then playing queen g4, and then, and only then, managing to take the pawn successfully. All right? Uh, this first cheater uh, then completely, completely neutralizes the counterplay of the position by simply capturing on c5. Uh, and then, when black does not take the pawn back right away, the rook arrives completely cutting the circulation of the black position and you know white is uh white is in good shape now again every single move when a person is cheating happens between uh this one of the giveaways is a consistent time usage so white plays this move in six seconds this move in seven seconds this move in seven seconds this move in five seconds uh this move in seven seconds six seven seconds eight seconds Seven seconds. You see what I'm saying? So white is falling into that trap of playing every single move in seven seconds, in seven seconds, in another seven seconds, in six seconds. <laughs> and the reason for that is some cheaters are, well, almost, they're all stupid, but some of them like have a phone, right? And so they see a move played and they put it in their phone and then there's a response and then they go back and then, you know, they make their next move and, oh, that, that one took 12 seconds. And it was, you know, it was, it was not the top engine move. It was maybe the third engine move. They're like, well, I'm not going to, you know, they, they, they think they're very clever. Um, and this cheater just absolutely mowed down this, this poor subscriber. Every move, six seconds. A couple of them were 12, but six, five, six. And a cleared house, promoted a second queen. And, you know, um, by the way, you know what's funny? Um... Any normal person here with two queens goes and gives checks, right? Like anybody who promotes two queens, of course, just gives a check. But the move h4 here is also made in six. The person playing white has absolutely no idea what they're doing. This and this both lead to checkmate in six. So they are both the top move of the engine. Uh, and white plays h4, which is just like a hilarious... Like, nobody on the planet does not play queen g8 here. Like, I would play queen g8 because it's a check. And you force the king out and you're probably... I mean, it's just very funny. So, this person uh, was a cheater. Now, how would this person do in a game where they also had to play a cheater? Both of these people were banned, right? So, let's see. Um, it was a regular king spawn game. All right, h6. Uh, trying to stop knight g5. And now, after castles, black plays the move g5. Okay, so black volunteers themselves for a bad position. You're going to see in this video how a couple of these cheaters in the opening stage, because we, we don't actually know how good the cheater is. Like if the cheater is rated 700 ELO, they don't actually know how to veil that they are not cheating because you just, 700 is a beginner, okay? Uh, but if the cheater is like 2000, but they're cheating, 
then that's like very, that's tough because the 2000 will know when to throw the game a little bit, right? And of course, we're also looking at uh, the time usage. So here, white is castled and black does this. There's a reason why white does not develop another piece. When black is sacrificing development for very, very unprincipled play, the way to punish unprincipled play is to open up the center. Even if you've already made multiple pawn moves. Now you will notice black does not take on d4. Black tries to close the center, tries to make it locked, okay? Now white plays d5, okay? Shoving the knight back and now knight c3. But now black plays rook g8 and knight g6, and actually it's a closed position. And computers don't really understand closed positions that well. They will give advantages, but, right? So a4, why a4? Ah, because it's the, you know, it's one of the top lines of the computer. Like no beginner here plays a4. I mean, it's just a, you know, a4 is basically like I'm taking space over here and I'm preventing a6, b5. Yeah, a4 is top computer move, so played by white. Uh, black now plays knight f4, the third computer move. Uh, white plays h3, okay? Now, h3 gives back some advantage. Um, and, and again, every one of these cheaters could be playing slightly differently. They could be playing, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to throw in a move of my own, right? So now black plays a6, second line of the computer. Uh, now we have knight d2, um, which... Uh, tries to get out of the way. We have knight to h5. And also, the funniest moment in cheater games is when they realize they're being cheated against. Because imagine you're cheating and you're actively looking at a cheating, like a, at a stockfish, and your opponent is playing all the best moves. So this is now the top move of the computer. Uh, taking is the third move of the computer. Uh, and, now, uh, and now g4 is the second line of the computer. Uh, <laughs> so everybody knows that the best way to respond to being attacked on the side of the board is to just play b4. <laughs> I love that when the person, the cheater playing with white, every time they tried to make a move on their own, they lost the game immediately, okay? Black, of course, takes. Now white plays g3. What people don't realize is they're like, okay, I'm gonna throw in a move of my own right now just to throw chess.com off. Yeah, now queen h4 and uh, yeah, h2 check and rook takes g3. <laughs> you tried. It was good. You tried your best. Uh, now, of course, white is completely lost. Queen h3 attacks the knight, now queen f1, uh, but now white starts cheating. Okay, so now, like any normal human here, who obviously doesn't know how to play chess, just loses with white very quickly. What the computer does with white is it finds a queen trade and now keeps the game going a little bit, all right? So black is completely winning, but it's going to take a little bit of time. By the way, what do we teach beginners when you're up material? Trade, of course, no, rook h4. Why rook h4? Top engine move. f5, top engine move. You will notice, by the way, that black has a ton of time. Why? Because black is using a bot. Black is not transferring moves. Uh, I think black is just, all their moves are coming in one second. Look at this, half a second or one second. Black is, look at black's time is just not going down. Black is using a bot. They are using some sort of, you know, thing that automatically plays moves. Um, look at this, black is just not thinking at all. Like how is black finding the top computer move in one second? <laughs> Like Black's, just, Black's times are just not going down at all. Rook a5. Oh, Black's just not thinking. Look at this. This is insane. Black slowly outmaneuvering white. Bishop c6. Knight f4. Look at this. The rook is pinned, so it doesn't even need to be taken. Bishop, he's just not taking the rook. He's just not taking the rook. Bishop d4. He's still not taking the rook. In, in one second, Bishop f2, he doesn't even take the rook. He's just refusing to take it. Look at this. Finally. No, he still doesn't take it. Rook g8, because he has this. And now it's force mate. Black played 55 moves in this game in 56 seconds. Insane, right? Yeah. Okay. So how can a person like that run into someone that they're going to lose to? <laughs> Say hello, cheater number three has entered the arena. Or maybe they won't. You know, maybe white just has uh, a bot that's unbeatable. Um, and I do think that the person playing with white... Uh, I don't think they lost the game. I think their bot was, was very good. Now, this person who has just entered the arena, cheater number three, this person would deliberately get losing positions in the opening. What I mean by that is this. So, this strategy worked against many people. Just losing material. That's what Black... This is very funny. Like I told you, every cheater is a bit of an idiot. So they think they're very clever. They're like, I'm gonna sack a bishop on move three, and then I'm gonna cheat the rest of the game, and nobody will ever catch me. Well, the problem is when you play somebody who's botting, uh, like white, you know, like 95. I mean, like, what, what even is this? Um, anyway, since white is botting, 
Uh, black is, by the way, playing all top moves, like h5, you know, c5, like these are all also computer moves. But because black sacrificed way too much material early in the game, they're just not going to be able to win. Look at this armada, right? White plays f4 in one second. Top computer move with the idea of anchoring everything and rook is on f1, king is on f8, so f5 in the future is going to be a good move. Like, you know the top computer move here for black? It's not developing any piece. The top engine move here for black is the move d3. Losing the pawn four different ways. But again, cheaters are, are morons. Like, they have no idea what they're doing. Nobody plays d3. Why would you play d3? Why can't take this because you would get pinned to... The what even is d3? And then, and then black just proceeds like nothing. Okay, bishop c6. Rook a7, of course. Now white plays d4, best move. Now black plays rook c7, best move. Bishop a4, best move. Uh, b5, second be best move. Now, everybody knows that when your bishop is attacked on one side of the board, rather than retreating the bishop to any of these two safe squares, you play f5 in one second on the complete opposite side of the board, sacrificing your bishop completely because you've evaluated in one second time that this attack is strong. I mean, I mean it's just so funny watching this. Uh, black plays knight c6. By the way, uh, black's best move, ef5 or ba. Yeah, knight c6 is uh, not it. It's one of them, but it's not it. White now disregards the capture in the center, shreds open the position. Black plays knight g4, the best move, hitting this, uh, just leaving the knight here. Now, both sides are just leaving the knight there, completely leaving the knight there, by the way. Now, folks, can I ask you a question? Would you rather move your king here, where there are no obvious checks, because rook c2 is not possible, or king h1, susceptible to a monster discovered attack? Of course, you would spend one second, less than one second. He played this move without losing a second of time. And the reason is, this is plus 10, and king f2 is plus 4. So he plays king h1, allows a discover check because he can block with the bishop, queen f6, and now rook f4, hitting the queen, and do oh my god, this is so stupid. These people are, and now white is obviously gonna lose the bishop, but check here, and uh, is a rook up, and yeah, unfortunately white's bot was just simply too strong. Uh, and uh, cheater number two uh, was unable to be slain. However, cheater number three, cheater number three strategy was working against other people, like cheater number four. <laughs> I, swear, I swear to God, I am not making this up. Like this just went on and on and on. All right. So cheater number three against cheater number four, King's Gambit. Okay. Knight f3, g5. One of the most aggressive responses to the King's Gambit, where White plays. Uh, you know, the, like White, for example, here can play bishop c4 which is one of the crazy gambits. There is also like knight g5. Um, it's called the Algaier gambit. And then you can play like this and this. Uh, what white, again, white is trying to throw off the, you know, the, 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 the scent of the cheating in the opening. So white plays h5, which is a horrible move. And then white hangs the knight. Just completely hangs the knight. Just queen e5, black is now up a pawn and a knight. Again, remember, what white doesn't know is that their opponent is also cheating. So white is like, all right, terrific, time to cheat. D4, all right? The only thing that white has going for him in this position is more development, okay? And the fact that he's cheating. So queen a5 pins the knight to the king, all right? Queen a5 is, of course, one of the top computer moves. White now plays bishop d2, and black plays bishop b4. Now, any human being on the planet here plays the move a3. Why? Because after this, this, you think I have this and this. And if the queen goes to b6, you think I have d5. Okay, that's what you think. Yeah, well, he's cheating, so he plays the best move, which is e5. Um, now, this is where it gets really goofy. So, like I told you, every cheater has a strategy. White's strategy is sack in the opening and then win. Black's strategy in this game is don't always play the top engine move. Any human on the planet sees the knight is hanging. This is not safe. This is not safe. This is safe. That's just the best move, and it's safe. However, black is an idiot, okay? <laughs> black is cheating. <laughs> like, black doesn't, <laughs> black doesn't know that. So black is like, I'm not going to play the top engine move. I'm going to play the second best move. Knight c6 is the second move of the engine, just losing a knight. Just completely losing a knight. Like, like you know, free knight. But nobody even knows that because they're probably like 200 elo and white does not play this. Why does white not play that? Because this is the second move of the engine. So both players make completely illogical moves 
completely because they're just trying to not play the top computer line. What does Black play here? Loses the knight again! What, what are they doing? Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have an aneurysm. This is so ridiculous. And now Black cast... <laughs> so, so now Black is castling. Now White plays knight e2, undeveloping the knight, trying to trade. Queen f5, you kick this out, but the idea was never to move the bishop because now f3! Oh my god, g takes f3. Any normal person on the planet here, f3, take, take, right? Right? That's what, take, take, no, the top engine move, d, what? The top computer move for White is obviously to move the bit. take the... The top computer move for black is ignore the pawns and play queen e4. Now white defends the rook by moving the king voluntarily. I mean, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Losing the bishop. Oh, but okay, you lost the bishop, but you can take this, of course. Yo, what the? Do you know what knight f4 threatens? Knight f4 threatens rook e1 trapping the queen. So if black plays bishop d6, white wins the queen because it's trapped. So black plays knight takes d4, sacrificing the knight so the queen can escape to c6 and take on f6. This fork has just existed. And do you know what the top computer move is here for white? g5. What the f- What even- What? <laughs> what? <laughs> now white takes on d4. This is so ridiculous. Okay, black's bishop is hanging, so obviously black has to move it to d6, right? In this position... Black misreads what the computer is saying. The computer is saying bishop d6. You know what the computer, you, you know what the cheater plays? This. Completely losing the bishop. C takes b4 is a free bishop. White plays rook g1. All right, so both sides, and now black plays bishop d6 because wait, oh my god, I messed that up. Now white plays queen f6, okay? Trying to trade queens and attack the king. Bishop e5, the queen is trapped. Bishop d... Saving the queen by counterattacking the queen, but black sacrifices the queen and is now up in exchange. So white is now lost, okay? White is losing, and now we have an endgame. Here's the thing, though. The cheaters start realizing, wait a minute, time is part of the game, all right? So white tries to create this barrier, but black is playing, you know, five seconds, six seconds every move, ten seconds, blah, blah, blah. Look at this. We almost had a repetition. They repeated. Now black plays a6 because the computer doesn't want to repeat. Time is going, all right? Looks like white is making a big comeback here, but there's nothing. Black is down to two minutes, and suddenly white just turns on the jets, and despite being in it, and by the way, you can't take this because of bishop e5. Uh, black doesn't know that though, which is, you know, why black played king f7. Uh, now king g8, dancing around the pawn. Now this, and again, uh, at this point, white starts playing on his own. Why does white start playing on his own? Because he hangs a knight immediately. Like you can tell, that white is completely playing on his own, and black needed 11, nine seconds to take on h7, not, not 11. And now, you know, again, white is like, oh my God, he only has a minute. Uh, go, 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 go. And black is cheating. So black doesn't know how to play chess, and black is completely winning by the end of this game. But unfortunately, he loses on time. He loses on time. And uh, you'll notice that here, black had like 10 seconds. To secure a draw here, black needed to take both pawns. But he doesn't. Black panics, starts repeating moves. And uh, cheater three defeats cheater four. Now, if you thought that was the end of the video, no, I've got two more for you. <laughs> cheater four versus cheater five. Now, cheater five was a tank. Cheater five had one of the higher ratings and was playing cutting edge mainline openings. This is a fried liver, okay? Like a mainline fried liver, the bishop is under attack. Now white gives a check on b5. Th this cheater from Greece was a, was a tank. I mean, uh, now queen e2, top engine move, bishop e7, now knight c3, top engine move, and after c6, you take take and uh, castle, and here black plays castles as well. Now, again, we're in some wild theory. Uh, white has played a fried liver. This has all been played before. Um, and the computers don't know theory as much as, you know, theory books know theory. So white takes the pawn in b7 and is now up two pawns. Black plays rook c8, the top move of the computer. Now white 
undevelops the knight back to f3. e4 is a really juicy move, but black is not trying to play all top moves. Black is trying to play this move. So knight d4. Now white plays knight takes d4, e takes d4, and knight out to b5, okay? So that is why instead of knight d4, you're supposed to play e4. But these people don't know anything, okay? These people are just like, I'm done making the top engine move, so now I'm going to play, you know, this other move, rook b8, queen c6, and what's funny is that this should be a draw. Rook c8, queen b7, rook b8, queen c6, rook c8. Now, it's up to white. So if white wants to repeat, he will repeat, but he's cheating, so he plays here. The problem with that move is that there is d3. So it's a completely equal position, and if you take on d3, white, uh, white is in trouble because you can't move anything. Everything is just paralyzed, even though you're two pawns up. So something very funny here happens. D3, okay, queen a7, dc, queen e3, they are both cheating 100% of this game. So both of these players, unstoppable force, immovable object, black plays knight d5, white moves his queen out of the way, and in this position, black, who has cheated the entire game, hangs their queen. Why does black hang their queen? Because the top computer move here is queen d7 attacking the knight and developing the other rook behind the queen and black mouse slips their queen and resigns. And you will notice it still took white four seconds to take it. Both players cheated for 20 moves, and black, instead of playing queen d7 and continuing this cheating fiesta, hangs their queen either by mouse lip or, I don't know, by dyslexia, because they think a c looks like a d. I don't know. You can't script this stuff, folks. I mean, like, this is just ridiculous. Like, I, I mean, both players cheat, and then one of them is like, oh, I'm supposed to, oh, no, and they resign. And that brings me to our final game of the day between Cheater 5 and Cheater 6. Uh, this just kept going, all right? Cheater 5, like I said, big tank, d4, knight f6. Now, uh, no human on earth plays ed5 here. It's either e5 or bishop g5. Uh, and uh, if you're cheating, you will play ed5. <laughs> because again, the computer doesn't know any openings. <clears throat> now both sides develop, all good. Bishop g4. <coughs> Now, knight b5 gets the bishop, uh, black says, I don't care if you get my bishop, and white says, I never wanted your bishop in the fr Come on. Come on. How are you gonna play knight b5 and then not take the bishop? And then you attack c7. Black defends c7. Now, white... Do you know what the top computer move is here for white? It's not h3, it's not rook e1, it's voluntarily leaving the black position... And rerouting, I mean, this is just ridiculous. Now, now, both of these players are cheating the whole game. Knight e3, top engine move. Bishop h5, top engine move. Knight f5, top engine move. Knight e6, top engine move. Bishop in a little bit. <clears throat> I think it's the second computer move. This is the best move. Now, knight g5 applying pressure to f3. Bishop takes f3. Now, black kicks out white's bishop. White retreats. Now, black retreats the bishop so it cannot be taken h4 is an attack now we trade and in this position of course queen takes f3 right auto you don't even think about it but every cheater tries to throw off the fair play team and in this position instead of queen f3 white plays the second move of the computer and keep in mind that black is cheating way more than white so what does black do continue to cheat at the top engine line knight e3 queen d7 one of the top moves a a4 a4. This is how white is trying to throw black off. H5, top engine move. Queen c2, king h7 defending the pawn. Now queen d1 back. Bishop h6. Yeah, black, unfortunately, not taking their foot off the gas. You know what the best move is here for black? Sliding the knight next to the king to open up the rook, to open up the queen, and to maybe play knight f5. Now black plays a6, stopping white's advance. Now black plays rook e7, preparing to double. And now black voluntarily gives away the bishop for the knight. And now plays knight f5, and we have this, and rook e8. Total dominance over the e-file. Opportunities to get in here. And uh, slowly but surely, g5, the white position completely falls apart. Black is like the terminate. 
Rook E3. Are you kidding? What? This dude finds a way into the white position the second that white's rook went here. Knight E3 is a fork, but then it would be taken. So why not put the rook there? The point is, if you guard this pawn, I get in. I'm now in the position. You will never get it. You will never get rid of me. So rook to e3, are you joking? This is what happens when a cheater plays a cheater, but one of the cheaters is cheating more than the cheater. Fe3, knight e3, that's it. And the knight can go to the corner and escape. The knight can go this way and escape. You will never ever trap my knight. And if you try, h4, king h5, g4, and black, like the Terminator, walks down white completely. Nothing you can do. Nothing you can do with my pawns. And my knight is a shield for the king and the pawn. There it is. And white, in dangerous shape, gets walked down and brutally checkmated. And uh, yeah, this last cheater who won with black and played essentially a 100% flawless game, Got a 97% cap score with zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, zero blunders, zero misses. And um, yeah, rookie three was just unbelievable. I mean, this is, this is, oh man, what a rabbit hole. We started from this poor, innocent subscriber of mine who was cheated against, who played a cheater, who played a cheater, who played a cheater, who played a cheater, who played the final boss terminator of cheaters that played 64 top engine moves in one game. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're watching this on April 8th, tomorrow's the world championship. Maybe you're watching this a year into the future, but if you're lucky enough to catch this in the first 24 hours it comes out, this is the last video I will be making before the World Championship begins tomorrow. Get out of here.